Hello, we're going to talk about Shriptakaka's pneumonia, and I'm going to do a voiceover of this comic, which I have created again. So previously, we talked about the pathogenesis of Shriptakaka's pneumonia, and especially it's leading to meningitis in the body, but we kind of glossed over the cellular response that we see, and there are a lot of cells, and so I'm going to focus on kind of the major players uh, so that it doesn't get too confusing and talk about what's happening and how these cells are responding. So in the comic, as we can see, we have these cells talking to one another and communicating with one another. And once the pathogen is recognized in the body and the signals are sent, we will see macrophages releasing these cytokines and chemokines, which are responsible for this inflammatory response that we talked about previously. And this allows for the recruitment of more of these cells. And so in innate immunity, um, we really kick off with strep pneumo by having the recruitment of macrophages and neutrophils play a very large role and they play a large role in phagocytizing these and we we'll see that macrophages also play a important role in the adaptive immune response later. But continuing with innate immunity, we will see interferon release and NK cells or natural killer cells also present and these cells are important for killing infected cells and recognizing these interferons and finding the harmed cells and the interferons act as almost markers for these NK cells to find them and, a, and trigger apoptosis so that they can so that we can try to mitigate some of this damage Moving over into adaptive immunity, we remember that we have these antigen presenting cells where we can present antigen, and especially in strep pneumo, we will see that these MH2 molecules play a larger role. We have MH1 also uh, that allow for our antigen to bind uh, with CD8 cells and apoptosis to be triggered, but truly with MH2 cells, MHC2 cells is where we will see a larger our response for our adaptive immunity and the ultimate elimination of the pathogen. So our professional antigen presenting cells are dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells. And depending on which one, uh, once the CD4 cell binds to that antigen, so the antigen will be presented and the CD4 will then bind. And depending on the response, we might have a TH1 uh, cell, which you have to differentiate into, which happens uh, when the antigen is presented on a macrophage, and because of that, it's been engulfed or phagocytized, and then we see it killed. Or also, if it differentiates and the CD4 differentiates and becomes a Th2, we see antibody release. And we have antibodies over here, and especially for strep pneumo, IgG and IgA are incredibly important. IgG is important for the elimination of the cell because it's more floating around and it's in the sebum and that's helpful but IgA is incredibly unhelpful because if we remember it is helpful for pathogens that are on the mucosal surfaces and remember that strep pneumo enters through the nasopharynx so it's helpful for neutralizing those so the antibodies act to neutralize the pathogen which is important. So it can be confusing because we talk about the dendritic cells um, releasing the interferons and neutrophils coming to the surface and CD4 cells binding and NK cells killing and macrophages coming in and MHC complexes, but it's important that the ultimate goal of both our innate and adaptive immune responses are for this ultimate elimination of the pathogen. And while the pathogen may not be intentionally trying to harm the body, it is harmful to the host. And so it is important that it is stopped and ultimately eliminated to mitigate that damage. Thank you.